So let's talk about the series. I believe that you and Kyle Larson own started High Limit. Uh, I know what it's all about, but some people that watch Kenny Conversation might not know. Tell me about the series that you and Kyle Larson own, High Limit. Yep. So Kyle's my brother-in-law, obviously. And, you know, so we get to have some candid, friendly conversations on the side, always, you know, just about things. I'm always been an outlaw guy and he's always kind of been like, why do you, you know, why do you want to sign up and why can't you guys run other things? And, um, you know, so I've, I got you to thinking (laughs) one, one thing Kyle has the unique ability is that no matter what car he drives, a lot of people want to watch him. And, Luckily, he loves sprint car racing. So he, you know, with his relationship with Flow Racing, you know, they want to do something revolving around Kyle a little bit because they know every time that Kyle races, they get big, big viewership. You know, he's a show. He's a show, right? Well, they they were open for whatever Kyle wanted to do, whether that was, you know, show up in a late model and, you know, somewhere in a, uh, a payment late model in Berlin, Michigan, or, you know, they, they just wanted to do something based around Kyle. Well, Kyle wanted to do sprint cars to, to try to make sprint car racing bigger because he saw on the late model side that they had freedom and that was uh, making their purses. Like they were racing for a lot more money. He felt like, and that's why he was racing more late models is because he felt like he could race for way more money over there. And so then the sprint car thing, we started talking about how to do it. Well, obviously his, Sunday job eliminates weekends and we felt like you know Tuesdays and Wednesdays are are pretty open you know for most of the season uh especially you're not really competing against anything you know there's some baseball on um but there's there's not a lot of racing on and you know the only thing that we debated on is if we could get crowds to show up on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and uh you know so we started with 12 races tried not to interfere with anything and then we we went big as big as we could on the purses but we're lean and mean we don't have big trucks and trailers going down the road and you know a bunch of serious officials you know you crawl see me, before you walk crawl before we walk and try to understand it you know as much as we possibly can um you know so i live in that you know i'm the, i'm right there with the fi- officials and running around you know help, help and sell the tickets help and get the people in then i go down and i help push the cars off and i you know, so I'm really trying to learn that everything about what it would take to run a series. But so far, we're six races in, five races in now, and it's been, you know, really, really good. Uh, obviously, Flo's really happy. The racers are happy because they're they're able to, to now, in between travel, in between two different races, they're stopping in and racing for these $80,000 purses. On one night, $80,000 is our purse. Uh, that's our minimum. And then we have two $50,000 win purse purses that are that are a total of 140,000 and then the 12 race series has a $120,000 point fund and this is all because Kyle came to me and said let's use my likeness and my ability to get viewership and create a series and Michael flow, Jordan yep and then flow backs it and then you get my my you know entrepreneur brain going and then you know we end up with uh, a good group and a high limit series and uh you know Kyle's manager JP and Rob Moskowitz or they help kind of with all the the league legal stuff and you know we are able to to kind of come up with something pretty cool and uh, the racers are happy now um you know Eagle Raceway the other night in Lincoln Nebraska we had just droves of people so I we saw it it looked good so we proved that you know people are going to come out on Tuesday nights the viewership's great for flow and then and the racers are supporting it because the purses are are good. You know, so we had twenty-seven guys sign up full time for our series to travel around to all the different states. We had guys from Pennsylvania, New York, California, the Midwest. So, you know, it's turned out probably better than we thought. And now we just now we just need to figure out what to do with it. If we if we want to grow or if we want to kind of stay with where we're at or or whatever, but we're we're certainly enjoying it. Well, I really feel like you know, as, as I get older, there, there's good business models and then there's business models you try and they don't work. You know, we look years ago, Thursday Night Thunder, open wheel midgets at Indianapolis Raceway Park was the showcase for the great Jeff Gordon. So I believe that sometimes people get so excited for Friday or Saturday. It's like they get a little 
sad on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Hell, let's have a race. <laughs> I think sometimes that, that business model works. Sometimes it doesn't. And I see these World of Outlaw or these flow nights for late models. Flow nights. And the numbers are record-breaking. People sitting on their couch. Hey, honey, what are you doing tonight? Hell, I'm watching dirt on flow. Yeah. Chromecast matching up with my TV. It's on my big screen. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we're seeing, we're seeing you know, extremely high viewership and it's uh you know that's that's really big for sprint car racing because you know that's that many more people understand it know what it is so when we do come to their town you know they're going to support that local track to to see the stars come out and obviously kyle's star power rico abreu and a, and a few other people that that are supporting our series i mean everything helps you know draw those fans in but i i'm certainly a believer that the the streaming services are have connected us to a much bigger fan base and and i think this is just the beginning you know and that's why i'm really bullish on on sprint car racing and, and dirt track racing as a whole i think if we can clean it up make it a little more professional uh i think we can grow the sport immensely because you want to race for a living you can do it but you want those guys seventh eighth ninth tenth i get it. okay so we're uh man we just can talk forever we're already at almost 40 minutes Let, let's let's we're, we're on the end here, and this is where it comes a lot loose. So the hard part's over. That was hard on me because I'm a racer, and I owned a racetrack at Macon Speedway. Making a lot. I owned a racetrack with Tony Stewart, Kenny Schrader, Bob Sargent. I get it. So let's have a little fun. Then we're going to get a little, little uh, hardcore. The Knoxville Nationals. Why? When did it happen? Why are the – it is the Knoxville Nationals the granddaddy? Is it is it bigger than Eldora? Give me your thought on that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Knoxville Nationals is still the granddaddy of them all. Um, still, just something about that place. And I, I don't know why, but I mean, I think just just growing up watching it, you know how big the event is. It's certainly just a different. It's a different place when you go to Knoxville as a, especially as a racer that's going to compete. It just gives you chills going into that little town. It's just, it's, there's, there's really nothing much to the town. It's just nothing. It's, and then like that, (laughs) it's like they turn it on. Right. And then it's just golf carts and the bars happening and, and people there's t-shirt vendors and, you know, just, I don't know. It's just a, the place comes to life. It's like its own little world. And, uh, you know, it's all, it's the most diehard sprint car fans all in one place. We sell, so much more merchandise at Knoxville than anywhere else because people save their their vacation that are hardcore sprint car fans and they show up for that one week and um the track's really good it's really racy uh you know I felt like Knoxville always led the way and you know Eldora was right there with them but Knoxville always raised the purse and what Knoxville does too is one thing about their purse is it's not just a lot to win it's fifteen thousand dollars just to start the AMA on Saturday night at the Knoxville National. I never knew that. You yeah, it taught me a lot. That's unbelievably awesome. It's over a million dollar purse for the for the. So you know what they do is guys can travel from California and Pennsylvania and and wherever they're coming from, and even if they don't have the best week, I think if you run sixth or seventh in the B main, it's like seven or eight thousand dollars. You know, and then I never knew. You know, if you have a bad prelim night, they have that the Friday nights like the night of hard knocks they call it, which then they you know then it gives you a second chance to kind of make a little extra money plus set yourself up. So I just think they do everything right. Everybody's you know uh, Eldora obviously since Tony's Earl obviously did a great job at Eldora. Now since Tony's taking it over and, and taking it one step further, I, it's it's hard to not it's hard to ignore that there's a million dollar to win race. But I don't think that million dollar to win race will be around you know, every year. The Knoxville Nationals is, is, is there. And then the Kings Royal to me is, is the next, you know, biggest sprint car race that we have. Yeah. And Knoxville also is the home of a, a beautiful sprint car hall of fame. It's real. It's nice. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not some tin building. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, facility, the Knoxville facility is uh, second to none. I mean, Eldora's definitely, you know, made a lot of gains, but, but Knoxville, that Knoxville's facility, their suites, just everything about that place is, is, you know, the premier dirt racing facility in the United States. 